Good morning. My name is Hunter Schwegman, and welcome to the Continued Spotlight on Education presented by Neosho County Community College, where we highlight various programs and events happening each week at NCCC. And in today's episode, we're going to be sitting down to talk about the Department of International Student Services. I'm sitting here with our Director of International Student Services, Sarah Cadwallader, to talk more about her work. Sarah, how's it going today? Hi, Hunter. It's going very well today. Thanks for having me. Sarah, before we get started talking about your department and the, and the work you guys do for our students, why don't you just give me a little bit of an overview of who you are, what you do for the college, how long have you been here, things like that. Yes, thank you for asking. Um, yeah, so my name is Sarah, and I have been with the college since 2000. And six. So it's been quite a long run for me. Um, I started working in international education in 2012. What we do at the school is we're kind of a one-stop sh- one shop. I run the International Student Services Office. So from start to finish, um, when we recruit students, and we do that in many ways um, for athletics, and then we have students that come to us for other reasons as well, but we start with admissions, and I help students through that process. Then whenever they're here on the ground with us, then we provide services for them while they're here in our vicinity. So that's a wide variety of services that we we can perform for students here. We also have um, a liaison on our Ottawa campus who supports our students up there and also provides the same services that we can at our Chanute location. You mentioned being a one-stop shop for international students who are looking for some help. You know, and what kind of different things do they come to you for help and how do you help those students? Um, We offer a variety of services. So what I mean by one-stop shop would be, for example, when students need to like set up a bank account, for example, they would come to our office and we would give them... um, some support and offer them help in getting those uh, getting a bank account set up we would take them to the bank Um, sometimes students need to apply for a social security number if they're getting a job on campus Um, students need help um, just getting to the store from time to time Obviously, student advising is part of what we do, um, though we do also have other student advisors that help us with that. But there, it goes beyond that as well. It can be just any little thing. You can't imagine the number of questions um, that we help students through, but um, we are here for it um, every little bit. I think it goes without saying that international students have a bit of a different experience um, coming to campus and and going through their education here at Neosho County Community College. So what are some of the most common like challenges or differences that these students face and how do you guys help those students address those issues? Um, International students do face a lot of challenges when they arrive here in the United States, but also just on our campus in general. You know, differences just in terms of culture shock and um, adjustment. Sometimes there's difficulties with the language differences if they're non-English speakers. Um, They can have challenges just even with time. You know, some some of them are coming from different time zones and they have to um, have a period of adjustment there. There's just a lot that goes into it, but also mainly homesickness. I would say that that sinks in not right away, I would say, but at some point they're all faced with it. And so we do try to support them through those little challenges that they um, as they come. You mentioned homesickness, and I think that if I were to study internationally, I think that might be the the hardest thing for me to kind of deal with. So what kind of specific ways do you help those students work through that homesickness and to feel more at home here on campus? That is such a big challenge, but one of the ways that we do encourage our students to work through homesickness, obviously, is keeping in contact with their family back home. You know, we don't want them to become a crutch for them where that's all they're doing is talking to their family back home. But definitely can, keeping a, commu- uh, I guess, a, a line of communication open does help them work through that. Um, there's nothing like your family to make you feel better about your situation. But the other ways would be, you know, just trying to find some common people that you have commonalities with, you know, um, people that might share the same language with you. Um, also, you know, food is a big deal. A lot of our students who struggle with homesickness, they really miss food. I There's so much that goes into food when it comes to what makes you feel comfortable. You know, whether that means take a trip with your friends and go find a restaurant, you know, where you can eat something that just makes you feel warm and cozy. Those are things that you can do, little things that can make your, your journey a little bit easier. But this goes so, you know, both ways. We have students that are here from around the world, but, you know, students in the U.S. that study abroad, they go through the exact same challenges. And so, and I've lived abroad myself, you know, and uh, struggled through some of these things. And so it's just really about finding a core group of friends that you can surround yourself with, support each other. When you're feeling like you're struggling, then make sure that you have somebody to talk, talk to you through it. 
In what other ways do you support these students in their transition, whether it be academically, social, personally? You know, what are you? What kind of different things does your office do to help those students make that transition as easy as possible? Well, one of the things that we do um, right when the students arrive here on campus is we do provide an orientation for our students. Um, the purpose of that. Um, is to help them adjust and acclimate. Through that orientation process, we cover a lot of different topics, but we definitely top, um, we cover, you know, how to be a student, a successful student, you know, dealing with homesickness and culture shock. Um, we also talk about, you know, just, you know, staying on top of your grades. And we talk about, you know, rules, federal rules and regulations when it comes to their visa types, because, um, you know, international students have a lot of rules to follow, and it's different than, for our U.S. domestic students when they're going to classes, you know. So some of that can come with a lot of pressure that, you know, not all students have to deal with when they're with us. But it's important that our international students keep those things in mind as they move forward in their academic journeys. You briefly mentioned the fact that international students deal with a lot more government regulation um, when it comes to taking classes here in the States. When it comes to these visas and whether that be student visas or work visas, you know, how does your office assist students with these uh, applications and the process of securing those visas and renewing them? So it is my responsibility as our school's um, primary designated school official to be up to date and educated on federal rules and regulations for international students. So when it comes to the visa application process or even um, work visa applications, I'm, I'm fairly educated on that. It's easy for me to be able to offer support to students who are just beginning in that process or students who already have a visa and are needing to renew it. I do understand um, the USCIS, United States Citizenship and Immigration Services Office, and how that f how that functions. I'm also very familiar with the U.S. embassies and how they run. So when students are at that point where they're applying for their visas, I usually just help them find the correct embassy websites and guide them through those processes. Usually it's just me pointing them in the right direction once we get to that point after they've completed their admissions process with me and I've given them the paperwork they need to move on. But if there's questions, then obviously I know what they need to do in that process to help them get through it and get their visas approved. We've talked plenty now about getting the students here and getting them started in their journey through being a Panther. Once they're here and once they're on campus and taking classes, what kind of unique contributions do the international students bring to campus? So international students bring a lot um, with them when it comes to our campus community. Um, they enhance our classroom discussions. They bring their own unique cultural um, differences with them. The, there's so much that they contribute when it comes to just exchanging information. So that's my favorite part about having international students on our campus is that we learn so much through them and they learn so much through us. Not only is it good for our students, it's good for them. In addition to that, they also enhance our the economic climate in our community. Whenever they're done with their academic experience here in the United States, they're going to take what they've learned and they're going to take that home and the information that they received about our culture and America in general is going with them. When it comes to like cultural exchange events or programs, you know, what kind of things does Neosho County Community College offer both for these students and for the community in general to come learn about these students and their cultures? Um, throughout the year, we offer um, a wide variety of opportunities for international students specifically. So we do have an international club which offers international students opportunities to explore our culture and cultures of other nations. We take trips, um, in our region anyway, to go and um, maybe see a show or go out for some um, different types of food and explore culture through that way. Most recently, we collaborated with our history club and we took our international student club to our World War I museum in Kansas City to explore that beautiful museum and the history there, but also how it affected the entire world. And we got to see all the different nations that participated and our students got to personalize that for themselves and see different artifacts from their own countries and different uniforms and kind of make it a, a unique experience for themselves 
right here in the U.S., and we kind of thought that was a really special trip. Coming up in the next week, we are celebrating International Education Week on our campus. And this is my favorite week. We have a wonderful opportunity for our students here on campus, but also for our community to um, explore some international culture. So we're going to be offering an international culture fair on Wednesday of this week. And we're going to be offering food tasting. We're gonna be having henna tattoo art. We're gonna do some different international crafts. We're gonna have some games from around the world, photos being hung up. So kind of a travel through photos, if you will. And then also another opportunity for our community members and our students is we're gonna be having student presentations on Thursday of this week from noon to one in our boardroom in the student union. Um, Our community members members will have the opportunity to come out and learn about three different countries. So we have presentations over Grenada, um, which is an island nation, another island nation of Fiji, and then the country of Kenya. We really hope that our students and our community get involved with these events because it's our way for our students to share a little bit about where they come from and give back to our community in a small way. When most people think of studying abroad or studying internationally, I think the first thought that a lot of tip- people typically have is, you know, going to the big universities. I think people don't typically think of going to a community college overseas. So maybe what are some of the reasons that, that students do choose to come to Neosho County Community College over a larger university or going to university back in their home country? I get this question so often. Our international students are very diverse and we have quite a lot of students for being such a smaller such a small school like Neosho. We have students that are here for different reasons, but right now on the Schnuke campus at least, we have around 75 international students. We have around 26 countries represented. Um, and our Ottawa campus, we also have students there, around eight to 10. Um, students choose us for a variety of reasons. A lot of our students down here, at least are athletes. And so we do get a lot of students that are coming in um, through different recruitment agencies or coaches are bringing them into us. We also have students that are here through exchange programs. And we work with those agencies who specifically work with our school. And then I have also have students that just find us. And whether that's word of mouth or they had a cousin that came to our school um, or they heard about us because because the cost was right. The, the reasons vary so greatly. But what I can tell you is that students, when they arrive, we try to make this place feel like home for them. And we give them a soft landing here in the U.S., which isn't as overwhelming as it might be if they were to arrive at a big university. And most of our students, when they finish with us, tell us that they had a wonderful experience and they do come back and visit us from time to time, which makes me so happy. And we're just always so thrilled to see them start and finish with us. Well, Sarah, I think that gives us a a pretty good picture of what the Department of International Student Services handles here on campus. And I think it's an important service to, like you said, exchange some of that culture and put some students in in this in the country and and give them a good view of what of what our country really is like on a day to day basis. Thank you, Hunter. I really appreciate you taking the time today and having me on your podcast. Thanks. If you would like more information about the Department of International Student Services, visit neosho.edu slash international. And that concludes the continued spotlight on education presented by Neosho County Community College. My name is Hunter Schwegman, and I'd like to thank you all for listening today. Tune in next week as we highlight more programs and events happening at NCCC. Go show!